Determining Japan's most successful fighter pilot during the Second World War is extremely difficult, as the Japanese would often count kills on behalf of the squadron or air group, instead of awarding them to the individual pilots. In addition, many Japanese records were destroyed after the country surrendered, ruining what little official information was available. Additionally, virtually none of Japan's top aces would survive the war, meaning it was nearly impossible to determine the accurate kill counts for Japan's top aerial fighters. That said, the pilot most often associated with being the top aeronaut flying under the colors of the rising sun was a young man from a small mountain village in the Nagano prefecture named Hiroyoshi Nishizawa. The fifth child of Shizoji and Miyoshi Nishizawa, Hiroyoshi worked for a textile factory after graduating from higher elementary school in the mid-1930s. One day, while on his way to work, Nishizawa saw a poster advertising the Akaran, Japan's flight reserve and listy training program. Nishizawa qualified for the Japanese Naval Air Force, beginning his flight training in March 1939 and graduating 16th of the 71 students in his class. In October 1941, Nishizawa was assigned to the Chitose Kokutai and detached to Vanakanu Airfield in New Britain. The Chitose Kokutai was scheduled to receive A6M2s, but most pilots were armed with old obsolete A5Ms while awaiting their new planes. On February 4, 1942, Nishizawa was flying his A5M over a ball when he spotted two PBY Catalinas flying nearby. He attacked one of the Catalinas, shooting out its engine and driving it away from the Japanese base. Nishizawa was credited with a kill on the aircraft. Still, the Americans were able to limp their crippled plane back to base. Shortly after this, Nishizawa would finally receive his first zero. He claimed kills over Port Moresby in the form of one Spitfire on March 24th and three partial Spitfire kills on the 28th. Nishizawa did likely engage and perhaps shoot down several Allied aircraft. Still, it is worth noting that there were no Spitfires in that part of the Pacific at the time. Nishizawa was moved to the Tainan Ku under Captain Masahisa Saito. The Tainan Ku operated from a jungle airstrip on Lay, which offered the aggressive young pilot many targets in and around Port Moresby despite being in deplorable condition. On April 1st, Nishizawa linked up with fellow pilots Toshio Ota and Saburo Sakai to bring down two P-39 Aracobras. The three pilots would immediately become close friends, going on to form the cleanup trio, as the three men who would all go on to be top aces often flew together. Nishizawa's rise as one of the most successful fighter pilots of all time would begin on May 1st when he attacked a contingent of P-39s and P-40s, bringing down two. The next day he would repeat the process, bringing down two more P-40s over Port Moresby. Another would follow on the 3rd. He would then go on to share in the destruction of seven more Allied aircraft on the 7th before downing two more P-39s on the 12th and 13th. On May 17th, the cleanup trio took part in strafing missions over the Allied airfield at Port Moresby. After completing their strafing runs, Nishizawa and the other two pilots broke away from the main group, heading directly toward the Allied airfield. The trio then proceeded to do a series of loops over the field, much to the chagrin of the Allied commander. The pilots thought they had gotten away with their fancy little trick, but were immediately summoned into their commander's office. In front of Sasai was a note that had been airdropped by the Allies. To the late commander, we are very impressed with these three pilots who visited us today, and we all liked the loops that they flew over our field. It was quite an exhibition. We would appreciate it if the same pilots returned here once again, each wearing a green muffler around his neck. We're sorry we could not give them better attention on their last trip, but we will see to it that the next time they will receive an all-out welcome from us. The three men were reprimanded, but all agreed that the antics had been worth it. Shortly after, Rabal was attacked by a flight of six B-25s. Ishizawa and the trio were able to shoot down five of the six aircraft, preventing Rabal from being bombarded. On May 20th, he scored another kill on a P-39, followed by two P-400s on the 27th. On August 7th, after moving to Lacuna Airfield, Nishizawa was escorting a flight of Japanese bombers to Guadalcanal when they were met by 18 F-4Fs and 16 SBD-3s from Guadalcanal and a nearby American carrier group. Nishizawa claimed six kills. 
However, his friend Sakai attacked one of the groups of planes from behind, believing they were American fighters. The aircraft were in fact SPDs, and Sasai was shot in the head by one of the tail gunners. However, despite being believed lost, he would miraculously return to base several hours after the rest of the trio, weak but alive. Good luck wouldn't hold forever, however. By the middle of September, Sasai and Udo were dead. The unit was renamed to the 251st Kokutai and sent back to Japan. At this point, it was believed that Nishizawa had scored roughly 40 to 55 kills. He visited his friend Saburo in hospital while in Japan, complaining that the air war in the Pacific had changed and stating that the Japanese no longer had the upper hand. After returning to the front, Nishizawa would score his first P-38 kill on June 7th over the Russell Islands. He would follow this with his first Corsair kill. Nishizawa added six more kills by mid-June, but at this point, Japan ultimately gave up on counting individual kills. Vice Admiral Junichi Kusaka honored Nishizawa, giving him a ceremonial sword. Nishizawa was transferred to the 253rd Kokutai in September, operating from Tibera, where he would increase his claim victories to 85 before being sent back to train young Japanese pilots. However, Nishizawa's stint as a trainer would be short-lived, as he hated it, causing him to perform poorly in this boring role. In February 1944, he was attached to the 201st Kokutai and sent to defend the northern Kuril Islands. From here, he was sent to Cebu Island on October 24th to protect the Philippines. Nishizawa was in charge of escorting the first ever intentional kamikaze raid comprised of five A6M2s strapped with 550-pound bombs. At least two of the five aircraft would hit their targets, with ace pilot Yuki Oseki succeeding in sinking the escort carrier St. Lo. While defending his suicidal wards, Nishizawa shot down two F6Fs, bringing his total to 87 claim kills. After reporting the day's success to his commander, Nishizawa requested that he be allowed to participate in the next day's kamikaze mission. He told the commander that he had foreseen his own death, and at most had a couple days to live. His request was turned down because his skill set was vital for the air defense of Japan, and a novice pilot was ordered to fly in his plane on the suicide mission. Despite having virtually no experience in the air, the unnamed aviator took to the sky the next day, managing to crash Nishizawa Zero into the escort carrier Sawani, resulting in over 200 killed, wounded, and missing. Nishizawa and most of the other experienced pilots boarded a KI-49 Helen for the short trip to Luzon to claim his new aircraft the following day. However, while flying over Calapan on Mindoro Island, the fragile, undefended bomber was attacked by two Hellcats of VF-14. The Helen was shot down, resulting in the death of everyone on board. At the time of his death, Nishizawa was the top Japanese aviator of all time and the highest scoring ace of the Pacific during World War II. His funeral was held in December 1947, after being continually postponed pending the war's end.